guys, HacksterTech here for another video, and today I want to be talking about why the Edison email app is actually now my favorite email app on Android, and I just recently did a video comparing some of these email apps. Um, everything else is pretty much as it was. Uh, the Samsung email app is still um, a really great solid option, but after I did that video, I found out that actually it's not available on the Play Store for devices that are not uh, Samsung-based devices. Uh, so some people might not be able to get the app from the Play Store, so that is one con. Um, but then the other thing there is um, I did actually find that this app, after exploring a little bit more, is, is kind of filling more needs than I thought it did uh, originally. Uh, and one thing that I'll just note is that in a lot of the videos that I do, um, I do test them in detail for an extended period of time, and so I'd use this app uh, for several months, actually, but this was some time back, uh, and then I was reviewing some other apps and kind of just playing around with them, and I didn't realize they had changed this so drastically. Um, so I wanted to do this video because this has actually become my favorite email application, uh, and this is completely available for any device, so it's not limited to just Samsung devices. Now, in my previous video, I did link uh, a location where you can download the APK if you want to try the Samsung email app. Uh, on a non-Samsung device, it should be compatible. Um, but this is the app that I actually am finding I'm using the most and liking the most. So let's go ahead and get started. It's called Edison um, Email, and it is one of the ones that I reviewed in that previous video. Now here you can see that um, the interface, it's, it's similar to what I showed before, but I'll show some just fine-tuned things that I didn't find out until later on. So the first thing, basic thing here, let me just go ahead and go to um, the settings of this app here. Now in the settings, if I scroll down to uh, the bottom here, let me just show you what you can do here. You can customize how much information you're actually seeing in the app here. So for example, preview lines, I have it set to none. Uh, if I wanted to see three, let's just look and see what that would look like here. You can see it shows you a bit more information. So as I'm scrolling through my emails here, uh, it gives me a better view of all the information that I want to see. But I like to keep it a little bit more condensed, and that was one of the things that I was having some problems with with the clutter there. Uh, I was able to fix that by just simply um, clicking on preview lines, none, so that condenses it down to uh, more information in the screen here, which I really like. You can also get rid of the profile icons here on the left-hand side if you'd like. As I also demonstrated in the previous video here, you can have a dark mode enabled as well, which means that um, you know you definitely can tick that anytime you're in a dark environment to save strain on your eyes, which is really nice, and I do use this um, fairly often um, because I often am in sort of a darker environment, don't like to strain my eyes, but generally when I'm not, uh, and I'm in a more well-lit environment, I'll just keep it defaulted to this. But let's get to the reasons that I actually chose this, and I wanted to re-review this because this has definitely become my main app. Um, I uninstalled all my other email applications, and this is all I'm using. Uh, again, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. This is just purely from a functionality perspective here. Um, but I found a couple things here after reviewing this um, since they've made some changes from the older app. Now, the biggest reason that I actually had some problems before with this and probably the one reason that I couldn't recommend it as the main app, what had really made me stop using it is that I was occasionally finding the app was crashing, um, specifically when creating new emails, I believe. And so it kind of just, I wasn't sure if it was just my device specifically, uh, or if everyone using the app was experiencing the problem. But because of that, I ended up going to other options and finding other email apps. Um, since then, I have not had that problem, and I'm using the same device. So I'm finding that it's definitely fitting my needs really well. Uh, but there's some things that they've uh, kind of improved on. And so in the top right-hand corner, if I click on this assistant icon here, um, there's something really cool that I thought was really awesome. Um, it wasn't working at the time of the previous video that I did, so I couldn't really display it properly, and it's why I kind of breezed um, through that option here. Uh, but after playing around with it, it's actually working very well, and so it's this bill feature here. Uh, and I didn't realize just how incredibly intuitive it is, uh, but it's actually pulling from the emails that I have in my inbox here. You can see, I can see all my bills um, in one place, and this is pulling, again, just from statements in my email. So I can actually go through here and um, see all of my upcoming bills. I can click on Pay Bill, and I can be directed to the site to actually pay the bill. Uh, but it's really cool that I have that as an option. 
I have recent attachments listed as well, uh, and price drops, which is kind of cool as well, similar to Honey and other options that are out there that allow you to uh, basically get uh, updates for any discounts and things on products that maybe you were viewing or that you had purchased. And so this can, for example, if you had just recently purchased uh, maybe a pair of shoes and those shoes recently went down in price, uh, you can see those price drops and things like that. Um, but maybe my favorite thing that I've actually, after playing with this a little bit more, uh, been able to find here is the subscription management function, which I think is just really, really awesome. Um, what this allows you to do is I can literally just go back and forth between my subscriptions here. And this is showing you everything that you're currently subscribed to, even if you don't know you're subscribed to it. So for example, if I don't want to receive any more emails from Adobe, all I have to do is click on the unsubscribe option here, and that's going to remove me from the mailing list for Adobe, um, or I can keep it and just remove it from this entry here so that I can kind of continue on in looking through all of my subscriptions that I want to manage. Um, but in addition to that, I can also do it manually as well. So if I just really quick cut back here, um, and let's say I'm looking at my emails, I see this one I don't recognize. Uh, and this is a sales email kind of a thing. So all I have to literally do is click on unsubscribe. And I can actually click on trash all previous mail from the sender. And what it's going to do is send all the emails that I've received from that particular sender to my trash. Uh, because if I know it's spam email and I just hadn't gone around to unsubscribing to it, it's going to send all those emails to the trash. And now I'm unsubscribed. I don't have to go in and opt out at the bottom of the email or anything complex like that. I can just quickly unsubscribe from there. Um, you can also see what's on your calendar. This is something you can enable or uh, disable, which is kind of nice. Uh, a couple other things, though, that are pretty cool as well. And again, at the time of the previous video, uh, it was not working, maybe because I had just signed into the account and I hadn't given it enough time to sync, which is why I felt like the feature wasn't very valuable because it was not properly pulling the information where I knew the information existed. But after giving it maybe another day or two to actually uh, propagate the information, when I went back in here and looked, everything was pulling exactly as I'd hoped it would. Um, so for example, I can see my travel here. And here are some trips that were recently taken. Uh, so for example, um, I can go here to uh, one of these uh, trips that I took, and I can just open up the information for the trip. And here you can see that it's got information related to uh, the re reservation number, hotels.com uh, information here, directions, weather, um, contact information, it even has the location of the hotel that I stayed at here, which is really cool, uh, and the date that I was booked and specifically the dates that I was booked through. So it's literally got everything related to my reservation just pulled um, from the email in my account, which is really nice. I don't have to use a separate app to track all the information there. Uh, it's got information related to packages, which is really cool because I can go in here and I can click on track um, and it's going to open up with one of my browsers here, um, tracking information, but you can see if you want just a quick preview of the information here, all I have to do is look at my packages and I can see everything that's coming and what's expected to arrive when. So if I just know off the top of my head, uh, maybe what that package uh, tracking number ends with, then I'll know uh, what the expected arrival time is. So if that changes, I have a quick preview here. Entertainment. Um, this, I didn't really find a lot of ways that it was um, helping me gather any information, but it really just depends on what you're doing here. So depending on you know, what information you have in your email. You could see just entertainment kind of things. Maybe if you're going to a theme park, for example. Um, so a lot of really cool things that's just built into the email app. Uh, it is a side, so you don't have to use those things. Um, but you can certainly take advantage of that assistant to be able to see all that information kind of condensed into a view that you can easily consume without having to go in and search and find specific emails. Um, so that was one thing. Um, you can use this with multiple email clients like all the other ones. Um, so you can go into um, sort of an all uh, inbox mode here and I can see everything at once. In a new email that you create, you can um, use some of the editing features here. You can see that I can click on this icon to customize um, all the editing features here. I can bold text and kind of just word or similar to word functions that you'd have any kind of rich text uh, information you want to put in here. It just allows you to customize the content in here so it's not just a basic message that you're sending in 
um, you know, a standard email client here. It gives you the ability to really customize your message like you would in a desktop client, which is really nice. Um, you can add in attachments from here. Um, you have the option to even use templates, which is pretty cool as well. You can see here's an example template. I just click on the template and it shows me exactly what it looks like here. So if you want to create a template uh, for responses, even if you're using this for business purposes, um, you could certainly do that as well and add in your images and things like that. Um, another thing that I really liked about this email client is the fact that this particular email client um, does not by default, or at least did not appear to by default, add in a signature, which is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. I do not like it when email clients add in a signature for their app uh, unless you want to do that. Uh, I know they are trying to obviously promote their brand, um, but I just thought it was a plus that it does not push that on you where you have to go into the settings and find a way to disable that. Um, so there's no built-in signature or anything that's going to um, you know, put a, a signature or anything into those email replies. So that's kind of nice. Um, search functions are very quick in here. Uh, and those are really the main things that I wanted to review just to kind of go over some of the features here. Again, this is the Edison email app, which I'm going to have uh, linked in the description for you guys uh, and on my other review where I went over some of the other really good options as, as far as email clients. Um, I will have it linked in there as well. It's still linked in there, but I just wanted to dedicate a review going over all the features and really covering this more in depth because I've switched over to using this as my main email client uh, and it's really, really good. It's completely free. There's no ads or anything on here and I think it's a really solid contender whether you're using it for personal or for business use as well. Um, I will say that for business, I do use 9email, which I think is uh, maybe just all around probably my second pick at this point. Um, up there with Samsung email being in the top three, uh, but being as where uh, Samsung email was actually my top pick after I started playing around with this more and with some of the new features they've added in, I found that this has actually become my main and primary email client for Android for my personal email um, and for my, um, my YouTube email as well. Everything um, not YouTube business-wise, but my, my main business is what I use Nine for. So just something to consider there. I'll have all those linked in the description here. But I definitely wanted to show you guys um, some of these features and kind of get your thoughts and see what you think. So let me know below if you guys have another specific email app that you guys are using that you prefer. Um, if you guys checked out my other video and downloaded any of those, what you thought of some of those email clients. And let me know just in general what you think of the Edison email app. Um, if you've tried it out and had any experience with it, any cons, any pros. Uh, otherwise, guys, um, that's all I wanted to cover for this video. Um, I won't go into detail. Please do check the description. There are some ways you can support my channel for free. Um, you can get free stock from a number of different uh, companies. You can get uh, free bonuses from companies that allow you to get discounts off of items where you shop and do things like that. Um, there's the Cash app that allows you to get a free debit card, which, by the way, for everyone waiting for their stimulus checks, if you don't have a bank account, you can use the Cash app as a bank account. I just recently found out. So if you want to get your stimulus check and you don't have a bank account, you can just sign up for free for the Cash app, um, and you get essentially what is um, a free, very quick um, sort of bank account um, or similar to just a way to manage your money, but you can use that for receiving your stimulus checks, I found out. So... Just something to consider, but check out those options in the description. Uh, if you guys want to donate, you can definitely do that as well, but at the very least, um, check out those options in the description for ways that you can support the channel. And other than that, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for coming here, and I will see you in the next video.